Sorry, I was concentrating so hard at not blinking that it just kind of slipped out. That one too. One, two, three, listen. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learn, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. Now, I just want to cut to the chase really, really quick, guys, because there's quite a lot of steps in this tutorial and it goes for a little while, so let's just quickly check out some requests. So, we've had quite a few requests for the cable eye effect from Deadpool 2. So, that's what we're doing today, guys. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor in a nice close up right on that eye. Now, I'll go through the process of how I shot this in the tutorial, but Rest assured, it's not that hard to do. Now you'll also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and grab the cable eye effects pack, which contains a robot eye lens animation, as well as a rendered flare file. Now, you got all that? Well, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects, and as you can see, I have my shot set up in a full HD comp and ready to go. If we check out a preview, you can see that it doesn't quite look right. And that's because I shot this on a tripod statically instead of dollying back and it's in 4K. Now while I did turn the camera around or pivot it around in camera using my X2 motion rig from iFootage, I knew I wanted to zoom out inside After Effects. So here's how we do that. First off, let's head to the first frame of our shot. Then I want to hit S and zoom in a bit just so we're concentrated directly on that eye. And I might just position it into place a little bit better. Mm, about here is good. From there, I want to head back to scaling and hit the stopwatch. Then I want to head to the about the end of the comp here, and just back out to our original full width. In this case, since I shot it in 4K, this is a scale of around 50%. Let's then head back to the start of the comp, hit P to bring up our position controls, hit the stopwatch, and from there, I'm just gonna scrub through the footage and just adjust it so that the focus remains on the eye, and just to make sure the frame edge isn't popping through, like it is in a couple of pieces along here. Now the end result should look like this. Nice. So now that we've done that, let's track our eye. Now for this, I'm gonna be using Mocha from Boris FX. Now this currently comes with After Effects in the form of Mocha AE, but if you want the full featured pro version, you can just hit up the Boris FX website. Now, if we send this to Mocha right now, it'll grab the raw 4K video file, which doesn't have our animation, and it'll also take a lot longer to track. So what I'm gonna do is quickly render this out in full HD with our animations by hitting Control M, heading to lossless, selecting QuickTime, and make sure the animation format is selected because that's pretty high res, and you don't get any quality loss. And then I'm gonna quickly save this file and then import it back in. Done. Let's drop this into a new comp, select it, head to animation, and select Track in Mocha AE. Now this is a no dir but it will open up Mocha. And we'll just review the properties here. Everything looks fine, so I'm just gonna click OK. So the first issue I see here is we have several frames at the start of, well, a closed eye, which we can't really track. So we need to remove them from our track. To do that, let's just skip ahead a few frames until the eye is open right here. And then we'll set our start point by clicking right here. From there, let's grab the X-Spline tool and I'll draw a nice spline around our eye like so. I'm then gonna refine that by hitting Control A to select all of our spline points. And then I can bring these smoothing things down just to smooth that edge out a little and get rid of those sort of harsh points. That's great. Next, I'm gonna make sure we have 90% of pixels selected. We're gonna turn off shear from our tracking data and then finally, we'll hit the track button and let Mocha do its thing. Okay, track is done. Now I'll just have a look to see if there are any frames that need adjusting. Yep, now I'm just gonna adjust the spline here. And maybe here. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna move back before our start frame and then I'll just readjust that start point now. And from there, I'm going to hand animate the place of the spline. This is just sort of guesstimating where the center of the eye might be. I mean, this isn't totally necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just so our entire video has track points. 
Okay, so we have our track all done. Let's send this back to After Effects. We'll head down here and from the tracking menu, I'm gonna select Transform Data and hit Copy to Clipboard. Head back to After Effects and our first step is to add a new null object. Let's center that anchor point by right clicking, selecting Transform and then hitting Center Anchor Point. Let's now make sure we're on the first frame of our comp and then we're gonna head up to Edit and hit Paste. Our tracking data has now been pasted onto the null object and if we scrub through the footage, you can see that, that null is sticking right on that eyeball. Excellent. So the reason I used a null is a simple one, gang. When we start layering effects on top of the eye, we don't want to be constantly pasting that tracking data every time, especially if we want to add adjustments to that layer, like maybe move the position or animate the scale. By using a null, when we add a new effects layer, we can just put it in place and then parent it to the null and it should stick to the eye without issue. Cool, huh? Now my next step is a pretty easy one. We're just going to quickly dilate that pupil so that it reacts when the eye is open. You've seen this in shows many, many times. You have a close-up of an eye, the eye opens, then the pupil dilates quickly as it reacts to the light. So let's do that. Head up, add a new adjustment layer, we'll then head to effect, distort and add liquify. And then I'm going to grab the bulge tool. Let's then make that pupil a big booty bitch. There we go. Let's now parent this layer to our null. Next, we need to shrink that pupil back down again. Now to do this, let's firstly hit the stopwatch on distortion percentage. We'll then skip ahead, say four frames or three, whatever. And then we'll change that value back down to zero. Let's then trim those first few frames until the eye starts to open right here. And if we scrub through the footage, you can now see we have that sweet pupil dilation effect going on. Next up, it's time to add our robot eye lens. Let's head over to the project window, grab the file called eyeball that was in your download pack, and let's drop that into our comp. Let's firstly scale it down. Now, guys, mine looks pretty good at 17%. I'll then position it into place. And then, of course, I'll trim it to begin when the eye is first opened as well. And I'll follow that up by parenting it to our null object. Now, since our pupil dilates, we need to animate the scale to match our pupil's movements. So let's do that. Let's hit the stopwatch on scale, head forward those four or three frames, and then shrink our scale to say 12%. Now I'm then gonna move forward say two more frames and put it back up to 14% just to give it a bit of natural bounce. I'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer. And the next step with this layer is, well, I'm gonna hit T and I'm gonna bring the opacity down to around 50%. The eyeball sort of sticks out terribly at the moment, and that blends it in a little bit better. Last step, let's head to Effect, Stylize, and add Mosaic. Now, it's a robot eye, so I just wanted to give it a little bit of pixelation just to sell the idea that it's digital. So I'm just going to set these both to 170 and 175, respectively. Now, it is subtle, but I think it's just something that I'd like to put in there. Now, if we check out a preview, you can see our eye sticks all the way to the end. Now, of course, it is sticking to the eye extremely well, but we do have that issue that our eye has to open up. And at the moment, our eye lens is still just sticking on top of that closed eye. And <laughs> that looks a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is head back to the start of the comp, and then we'll just go forward frame by frame until we find the point where our eye starts to open. Right here. From there, we're gonna head up, grab the pen tool, and we're gonna mask out around that eyelid. That looks pretty good. We'll then hit M and change the transfer mode on that mask to subtract and hit the stopwatch on mask path. From there, it's just a process of going frame by frame and just moving that eyelid mask up until our eyeball is completely open and then just move it off center a little bit. There we go. Now we'll finish this off by just heading back to that first frame where our eye is sort of half open and then we're just gonna hit F and feather that out slightly just so it blends our mask in a bit better. Nice. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. Let's hit T once more, and we'll head to around this point in the shot, hit the stopwatch, and then we'll skip ahead around one second and fade it down to zero. That way we match the cable eye effect shot that's actually in the movie Deadpool 2. That looks great, moving on. And next step is pretty simple, guys. Let's just hit Control D to duplicate our eye layer. And from there, we'll head to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and grab a fast box blur. Now all we're gonna do here is just crank that thing up to around 60. 
just to give our eye a sort of soft, glowy look. Much better. Next, let's head up and grab a new adjustment layer and set the transfer mode to screen. We'll grab the pen tool and draw a nice mask around our open eye like so. And once that's done, we'll hit F and feather out anywhere from 80 to 90 pixels, nice and soft. Why so soft? Well, this is our glow and color grade layers for the eye. So for starters, I'm gonna head to effect, down to magic bullet and grab Colorista 4. Now guys, I'm using Colorista because, well, I own it, but this process can work for any coloring software or plugin you like. I'm just a fan of Colorista's flexibility, so that's why I'm using it. Now, all I'm doing here is adjusting the exposure and grading the eye to achieve a brighter, slightly orange look. And thanks to our feather, the effect isn't overpowering. That's our next effects job. If I turn it on and off, you can see what I've done. It's not exactly an overpowering look. It's just subtle, but it works. Let's then head up to effect, stylize and add a glow and blow that all out of the water. Now my settings are pretty easy here, gang. We just want to adjust the threshold to say 74.9, the radius to 68, and the intensity to two. You can see that really enhances our coloring and just brings up some of the details in the eye itself. Now let's finish this off in two ways. Firstly, let's parent this to our null, done. And then we're gonna animate the mask on those few frames before the eye opens. Let's start by hitting M and hitting the stopwatch on mask path when the eye is completely open. We'll then go backwards, adjusting the mask until the eye is closed, like so. Now from there, we're just gonna trim off those last few frames where the eye is closed. Let's then finish this layer off by hitting to where we started the opacity layer on our robot pupil. Hit the stopwatch on opacity right here, and then we'll fade it to zero on the same keyframe that our lens fades out. Now, just to enhance this a tad more, I'm gonna once again hit Control D to duplicate this layer, and then I'm gonna hit T and bring the opacity down so that it's a bit less harsh, but the enhancement's still there. Around 30% looks pretty good to me. Done. Moving on, it's time to add our flare. Now here's the tricky thing. We need this flare to track to our eye, obviously, but the camera rotates a full 90 degrees and flares don't rotate. They can expand, but they don't rotate. So how do we fix that? Easy, let's copy our null object down here, drag it up to the top, we'll then hit R and hit the stopwatch. Bam! We just got all of our tracking data and we removed all the rotation. Cool, huh? Now we can add our flare. Now for this episode, guys, I've just added a black solid, and then I have a custom flare that I've made in Null Light Factory. Now you can use either the one that I've rendered at a pass for that's in the download pack, or you can make your own flare. Either way, you need a flare, gang. So all you need to do is place our flare on top of the eye, and all I've done here is animate the scale and brightness to start small, as the eye opens and then bam, peek out right here with a big flash, just as the eye's completely open, and then it's just gonna settle back down to its regular size. We then get to the point where everything begins to fade out, just like with our other layers, and what we're going to do here is animate the flare's brightness, dying down to nothing, just like with our other layers. It's a very basic flare animation, really. Only five frames of animation all up. And just like with the other layers, gang, we're gonna trim this layer to start when our eye first opens. Now guys, the flare is a little bit dull to me, so I'm just gonna do exactly what I've done with all these other layers, and I'm just gonna duplicate it as well, because why the hell not? We've done it with the others. Now if we check out a preview, guys, that is our effect done. But one of you have asked uh, what I did to the color grade in the entire shot. So I figured I might just go through that quickly because I only really did one thing. I headed up, added an adjustment layer, dragged that below our flares, but on top of all of our other footage. I then head to effect, magic bullet, and I grab magic bullet looks. I then grabbed the preset boom, and then I started playing with the controls until I created a look that I was happy with. And I saved that as a preset called cable, which looks like this when applied. If I hit the tick button down below here, you can see the dramatic difference when I turn that on and off. Pretty nuts how cool the shot looks with just a bit of coloring. If I check out a preview, guys, that, my friends, is another Deadpool 2 effect. Mm. Done. 
add up all those steps and you get something like this. So guys, that is my take on the cable eye effect from Deadpool 2. As you can see, it's a pretty easy effect. There's just a few steps that you've got to go through to achieve the final result. Now gang, before I let you go, I just want to let you know that the Film Linen 100K short film competition is now open for entries. And even more exciting than that, we actually had a new sponsor come on board. So thank you very much, School of Motion, and welcome aboard. Now with the goodies that School of Motion has donated to the 100K film competition, it actually brings our prize pool up to over $3,000, which is amazing. Now some of you might be asking what School of Motion is, so let's cut to a pre-recorded version of me to tell you a little bit more about it. Thanks Gran over there. Hey guys, pre-recorded Grant here, and I'm here to talk to you about School of Motion. Now right off the bat, just having a look at their website, these guys have an absolute buttload of courses on offer. They've got stuff on MoGraph, Photoshop, Illustrator, character animation, just about anything related to the motion graphics field, they've got a course for it. And one of the best things is, these courses are actually taught by some of the best motion designers in the world. And every student actually gets their work critiqued by professional motion designers. They've even had alumni go on to land dream gigs in Hollywood and beyond. So if you're just starting out, or you wanna hone your craft, or you wanna learn some more advanced techniques, check out School of Motion now. You won't be disappointed. Thanks very much video of me, that was very informative. So for now guys, that's all I've got for you. I will be posting an update video for the Film Linen 100K short film competition later this week, so keep an eye out for that. That'll show you how to enter and a little bit of housekeeping there, so keep an eye out for that. But for now guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join the over 100,000 people that have already done so and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here and I've probably got a playlist here if I don't. Don't worry about it. I've also got my social media crap above my head as well as the Patreon guys. Please check that out. We have some exclusive stuff coming up very, very soon. And until I see you again, keep learning.